Gears on a bike can seem really complicated. I mean, in a car, you've probably only got six to worry about, or you might drive an automatic, in which case you don't need to worry at all. But on a bike, you might have 18, 20, 22, maybe even 33 gears. So what are you supposed to do with them all? Well, the good news is firstly that you can forget about the number of gears that you have. It's not actually important. There are gears on my bike that I literally never use. What is crucial though is the range of gears that you've got and being able to swap from your easiest gear right through to your hardest gear. And so instead of explaining about all the different gears, what I'm going to give you now are some basic rules. So your left hand controls big jumps in the gears by moving the chain from the little cog to the big cog at the front, which are also called your chain rings. Whereas your right hand moves the chain across the smaller cogs at the back, and that makes finer adjustments. You will probably find that when you're riding fast, so above 18 miles an hour, or about 30 kilometers an hour, that you will be in your big chain ring at the front. And when you're riding on the flat, and climbing, you'll be in your little chainery. But you'll probably also find that your left hand generally doesn't do all that much. Your right hand will be much busier. How do you know then when you're in the right gear? Well, it is actually very straightforward. You will be pedaling at between 70 to 100 pedal revolutions per minute, and you'll be putting in the effort that you want to put in. So not going too hard in order to keep the gear turning over, but then not pedaling really fast and not going anywhere either. So it is quite straightforward. There are, however, one or two mistakes that you will need to avoid. Firstly, you wanna make sure that if possible, you change gear before you really need to. So in advance of perhaps the hill that's coming up, because if you do leave it a bit late, Gears don't generally like changing under pressure. So if you have to change from your big chain ring to your little chain ring when you're on a climb, you may find it's actually quite hard to do so. So plan in advance and try and ease off the gears slightly when you do change. One final point to be aware of, and that is, as I said at the beginning, there are certain gears that I almost never use. Firstly, because they actually don't feel all that nice to use, but they also put the chain under a little bit more pressure than it would normally be. So if you find that you're in your big chain ring and the big cog at the back, that's called cross chaining, and it will, if you do it a lot, wear the chain out a bit more quickly. And then conversely, the small chain ring and the smallest cog at the back will also do the same thing. But then that is literally it. Gear shifting made easy. Now, if you want some more content like this on GCN, your first thing to do is to subscribe to the channel. We have new videos up every day and it's completely free. So make sure you click on the globe and it will do it for you. And then for more content, well, to set your gear shifting up to another level, you could click up there for how to change gear like a pro or for some tips on how to actually set up your gears, click just down there.